Hey Floss Tube, it's Kerry and Stitches. It's Friday the 6th of September. It's been seven weeks since my last Floss Tube. Well, at the summer holidays, they have came and went and my dining table is full of stuff as a result. So it's gonna be a whole load of stuff today. Um, I've got finishes, I've got whips, new starts, thrift haul, haul from here, there and everywhere, magazine flip through. It's gonna be a big one. So grab a drink, grab your stitching and let's get started. Um, welcome if you're a new viewer, it's lovely to have you here with me and welcome back if you're returning. I didn't say this is Floss Chip 165. So, the last time I wrote Floss Tubes, it was um, first day of the summer holidays and we've had, we had a, a lovely couple of weeks off um, where we didn't have, we just had days out and stuff. So we went to London for the day. Lottie's never done the sights, so we decided we would um, go down on the train for the day and that's what we did. We just walked and did all the sights, you know, Buckingham Palace, Tower of London, Tower Bridge, Regent Street, Piccadilly Circus, Whitehall, um, and lots of other places. I can't remember. Um, Trafalgar Square. So uh, it was ridiculously hot. It was like 30 degrees. It's like, like, I don't know, high 80s, low 90s, something like that. It was ridiculously hot. It was at that point the hottest day of the year. Um, I think London broke temperature records that day. So um, anyway, so we did that. And of course, most of London I had to go to Liberty. It is the most beautiful building. If you... Um, I love Liberty, I love their fabrics. Um, it's up and out my price range, but it's a beautiful building. The building is amazing. Um, so we picked up a little art card, just with Liberty on. And my little London souvenir was Liberty Scissors with the William Morris Strawberry Thief. Beef, I'm saying print. So then we went to Festival of Quilts on the Thursday. That was an ordeal. Festival of Quilts is at the NEC, which is by train. 45 minutes away we have to change at new street but so anyway lottie and i got the train um into birmingham got on the train for so it's a 30 minute train into birmingham and then 10 to 15 minute train up to the nec we got to um got on the train we're like yeah we went and had a pot around london at birmingham first and did a few things we wanted to do and then went to get the, went back to the station to get the train and there'd been a fatality on the line. So we ended up having to get the bus. That was an ordeal and a half. Uh, anyway, we eventually got there and I went to, having just been to Liberty, uh, went and to Caroline Elizabeth, sorry, Car Alice Caroline Fabrics and just grabbed that she had these sample packs. So it actually tells you the print the prints of all the Liberty fabrics and they're big enough that is, it's that size and that's plenty big enough for me to do this finishing with for generally or scrapbooking and I also picked up some slightly larger scraps too so um absolutely super super happy with all the, all these look beautiful fabrics and they're all Liberty and they're all mine so did that um we went to yeah so I got couple of pieces so I've got some slightly spring from sparkly at 36 pounds I love slightly spring it's gorgeous green and then this was just an unnamed fat not quite that fat eighth but that's really cool not sure what I'm gonna put on I saw that and just went that is a really funky neutral I like it a lot I may have picked up a couple of other bits for other things and uh, we've visited oh uh Gina's Dor Dorset buttons and I got some rings to make Dorset buttons and this little um, zipper pull, stitch marker, whatever, but not the scissors because this is mine. And from Trudy and Designs, I think I got some buttons as well but I can't find them and I got some Lady Dot and I got two really funky spools. Love the tops on that's what sold them for me. So that was Festival of Quilts. I'll try and put in a, a montage 
or some of the quilts. I may have put them on my Instagram, I don't remember. So we did that. What else did we do? We went to see the dinosaur exhibition at the local um, museum. We saw, we've been to a couple of con concerts. We went to see The Flash, which were a Queen tribute. And we went to see, we went to the Fate Festival, which was really, really cool. Um, lots of cover bands there, Pink, Green Day, Arctic Monkeys, Police, R.E.M. And we left before Oasis because we're just not that kind of person. Um, sorry, we left just after the start of Oasis. We were like, yeah, we're out of here. Um, we were, had a, a mini break in Wales. We took Milo on his first holiday. We weren't sure how he was going. So we thought we'd just go away for two or three days um, in case he didn't react particularly well. He loved it. He thinks the beach is the best thing in the world. Um, the hotel spoilt him. He absolutely had a fantastic time. He loved it. Um, so we just did um, Aberavon Beach, which was beautiful for dogs. We went to Pembroke Castle, dog friendly. Um, and I, of course, managed to find a little cross stitch kit. So a little Tudor rose from Textile Heritage because Henry VII was born at Pembroke Castle. So there we go. Um, we went to Aber Doulis, Aber Probably, and I'm not sure how you spell it, and I've probably butchered the pronounce, which was an old tin mine, which has a waterfall, which was beautiful. Just a tiny, tiny little National Trust place. So uh, we went there, and then we went to Hay on Wye on the way home, which is half in Wales and half in England, and is the book capital of the world, I think. It's got the most bookshops, I don't know, of a town in the world or something. It's crazy. Um, it's very quaint. So we had a pot around there and then came home. Um, but we had a lovely few days. You know, weather was, yeah, but it was really nice. Just nice to get away and just see some beautiful Welsh scenery and stuff like that. And Lottie and I have went out for a few days thrifting. Um, she was totally into it this summer. Last year she was like, eh, don't care. This year, totally into it. So, um, I got a couple of bits and pieces, uh, picked up beach up picture frame. I noticed my summer decor needed a bit more beachy stuff, so I figured I've got this, I've got this, and we will hopefully I can find a nice piece of cross stitch to put in inside it. Um was that one? Yeah, that was an acorns one. And then I got just a basic black frame, which is a seven by seven. So it's not a typical size, but it's a brand new one in so always good for the stash. And that was a nice one. And my find of the summer was this beautiful glass um, fish with frog. Uh, flower arranging, really. So there's the pattern on the side of it. It's pressed glass. So it's probably 1930s and 1950s. And I couldn't believe it when I saw it. have it so another little one but this is compared to my other one this is giant so that was my favorite thrift find of the summer so there we go that's the shopping portion of the thing done i have got other stuff but we'll you know we'll get we'll we'll carry on through so that's pretty much been our summer um lottie and i uh, started scrapbooks she's doing a general one i'm doing a concert one so We've been doing that. We spent a lot of time doing that kind of, you know, afternoons here and there do it over the summer. Um, oh, that's on the floor now. So that's pretty much everything. I've got a cross stitch to flip through in a bit. So I'm going to show you a few finishes and then um, we're going to go to whips. Yeah, and then we'll do a flip through. So I finished the big one of Ruth House. So my plan is to do the three standing ones like that, but I don't want to do, yeah, I don't want to do uh, the wording in the bottom that says home for the holidays, but I did like the Smyrna snowflakes at the top. So I'm doing a combination of both. And I finished the first one. So I'm doing, I want to say, is it mostly called for, except my blue is... 
that deep sea are the called for. My deep sea was not. I, I loved how bright that was, and that was what drew me to it. So I got colour and cotton abyss for that. And there's my palette. So it's glorious. And there's my first finish. And I put some beads in instead of the single put the petite beads in for the, some of the snowflakes and also in the wreath because it's Christmas and Christmas deserves beads. So there's that. And then obviously I've got plenty of fabric here to do the other two. Things are going on the floor today. I finished another home for the holiday stocking. This one was the gift basket. So this is home for the holidays, Blackbird Designs. Um, oh, mystery fabric. I don't know what it is. I think it's a 28 count. It might be 32. Come on. Yeah, it's gift basket stocking. So that means I've got two to do. This is actually a lot bigger than the others. The others are on 36 count. This is on 28 because I went, that's the right colour. That'll do. And I've just done it in three different reds. It's charted just in one, but I picked three because the other two are the other two that I've done are in three different reds. So um yeah, there's a bit of I can't even remember the reds. Brick and I probably I I literally went down to about a th two threads left of th of each of them. I ran completely out of one of them, which is what the bird's in. Baked apple's one of them, brick and KN maybe. Anyway, so I need to get some more. So two more to go, the stockings. I've got the holly and the ivy, which is that's the next one to do. I've been trying to just do one a year, so I don't know if I'll do another one this year. It seems unlikely, but it keeps me out of mischief. I thought I had three. Oh, I need to go back in that bag. Oh, well, there we go. So, other finishes. The It's my heart in hand, Honey of a Tiny Town. I did the Primrose Cottage conversion, so it's going to match all my other Primrose Cottages on the wall over there. I know, I promised a wall tour. I will do a wall tour. There we go. And I want to know is why the first la first lazy daisy always goes perfectly, and then the rest are terrible. Actually, they don't. They weren't terrible, but the second one, the second, the first two wings perfect. Second two, I must have redone them three or four times. Um, there we go. We've got spooky Halloween spooky tree by the trilogy. I put the beads on instead of, they're a bit big, but I put them on instead of stitching the candy cane. The pin's there just because I was marking, working out some finishing yesterday. Um, this is actually my swap piece for the swap. Funky florals for swap. And there we go. So this is part of a design called, the file name is like, 819 wreath from Ali Allerton Designs on Etsy. It was a very, very inexpensive pattern. Um, basically, it's these and then it forms a hexagon with that repeated at the top. So I've changed it a little bit to kind of make it look like one of those kind of like hanging terrarium -y type sort of things. And then added in that those leaves there. I'm actually really pleased with that because, you know, when you look at something really closely and you're like, is it does it look OK? Is it all right? And I put this away yesterday and I've just picked it up and looking at it like that, which is how I'm going to finish it. Well, I'm actually going to finish it like that. I'm actually really pleased with it. So there you go, me. One big finish I did have this month was Strawberry Fields Forever by Blackbird Designs. So I've had two Blackbird finishes this month. So this is on a solo die by Silk Weaver. I can't remember if it came out daily 30 or it's gifted to me. It's a lovely big piece still. So lots of nice funky things still on that. There we go. Um I think predominantly my own conversion. 
I think if I had the call for I used it, if not. I just loved stitching that brick wall. I loved it. So that's a fun thing. I clearly need to still tidy up the back though because it's a mess. And I've just remembered we took the car in for its MOT this morning and I was like, well, we're in town. It's a shop I need to go to. And Hubby and I went for breakfast and I was like, I'm sure there's somewhere I need to go. Can't remember. I know now. I was to buy a frame for that because it's FFO week at Daily 30 and it finishes today. Anyway, anyway, you're okay, I guess. That was a finish. This is on um, 18 Count Burnt Umber by Sparklies. With my own conversion again, I think. Yeah, probably. Might be a bit of bit of both, I think. Uh, monthly minis from Primrose Cottage. This is June. Ooh, it's not. And then July obviously had the uh, American flag, so I recharted it with the Union flag for us. So that was a cute little finish. Those were the colourful colours as well. Um, we have Yonder. Oh, this is my last one. This is my last finish for you folks. Yeah, let's have a look. Any town, Yonder, you're okay. Wreath House, Swift Stocking. Yes. So it's nine finishes you've seen. Who am I? I just, not, I, I don't know what it was in August. I was just like, I'm knocking out finishes. And I did. And this is Yonder from, by this, by Hello from Liz Matthews. And this is a mystery fabric, but it's very pretty. I think it's 28 count. Uh, and that's just the DMC conversion. And I really loved that. Really enjoyed stitching it. So. Even if those flowers took a deceptively long amount of time to do. Oh yeah. I love stitching. That was great. And is that everything? I think so. Let's pop those all back in the box. So. I'm going to do the cross stitch flip through. And then we're going to go to whips. Because... Let's mix it up a bit. Oh, so this is going to be like a 40 minute video, maybe even longer. Cross stitcher, 414. I know I've missed one out, but I'm not going to go back to one you can't even get anymore. So there we go. Cross stitcher, 414. This is the bumper October issue. Um, I saw on the cross-stitch thing, a few people complain, no cover kit. Well, you know. Contents. I, there's a few, there's a couple of things I really liked in here. Right, a few things I really liked. One or two I like enough to want to stitch. Let's go with that. I've seen this, they've had this pumpkin in before. And basically you stitch, they give you a little... But, and you just stitch it on repeat. I think it's if you stitch it five times. So I do like it though. It's funky. But I have another one I could do as well. So let me show you how to finish it off like that. Stitching with Julian. This little pattern that says dogs welcomes dogs welcome humans tolerated. I agree. So dogs aren't really welcome here because. Milo has other thoughts about that. We would welcome the dogs. Milo wouldn't. And we've got the Willow Fabrics offers as usual. Um, we've got the Calendar Salt, and that's October's block. These these are all Emma Congdon ones this year. A little painting. Emma Congdon again. Guess what? Emma Condren, Colours of the Home. So she's done the colours, the seasons, and this is now Colours of the Home. So you've got Moan Lawn, Quilt, Teddy Bear, Money Jar, Nana's Blanket, Fridge Door, Friday Night Chips, Chocolate Stash, Fluffy Towels, Washing Basket, Sewing Room, Birthday Cake, Cereal, Football Kit, Pyjamas, paw, Muddy Paw Prints, Crossword Puddle, and stuff like that. So that's quite cute. You could always do a smaller one and like pick like four or five, you know, that would suit you. Oh, jigsaw puzzle, that's fun. Uh, we've got some Doreen Jones cards. Uh, 
Hello there, Doreen Jones, because she's posted on her thing. Emma has. This has been, in, I think, I think they've used patterns that were in their Savvy Stitcher thing before. A little spitter. That's quite cute. All done in light effects. So I'm assuming it's ones in glow in the dark light effects. But yeah, it is. Sweet Needles Notions or their letters page. Not in this one. It was in the last one. Autumn card. I thought they were Sheena Rogers' little set of full coverage pin pillows. I think they're probably like 30 by 30 or something like that. Oh, okay. 55 by 55. They're a bit bigger than I thought. But they're cute. This is a tiny modernist. Love the design. Don't like the colour of the bird. But you could easily change that. Unless it's only two colours. That's really cute. Another one of the wreaths. That's really pretty. Some Monet inspired full coverage pieces. Oh, they're not quite full coverage. Let's put it this way. They're probably 98% full coverage. It's just li literally in the one. Maybe out of a 60 by 60 design, 100 stitches maybe that aren't there. Same for the other one. So we've got a spooky Halloween library. Right. Don't know who this guy Oh, Fiona Crouch. An interview with Joe Butcher, uh, an embroiderer. Boats for women, women, suffragettes. That's Doreen Jones. This has been in before, that one, but it's cute. Susan Penny. Okay. This I really liked. I don't think I'd stitch it. I don't know what I would, where I'd put it, but I love the design. And it's an Emma Congdon one again. And they have she did the two matching coasters as well. And then shows you how to do it in different colourways. But they don't give you the colourways, which is disappointing. It would have been really nice if they'd given you the colourways to that. Teddy Bear Alphabet. I made a bag for the laundry. These have been in before. These are Doreen Jones because I've got one of them saved. But they're very sweet. Stitcher's toolbox. Pretty sure that's been in before as well. Here's that by Jenny Barson. This I liked, except the cat's weird. Maria Diaz. It looks black work, but I love that bat. Like that bat is so cool. With the black work wings. I could see me stitching the bat, but not the cat because the cat's weird. An autumn hoop. We're only half of them, just over halfway. Good grief. Um, another little thread organizer. I've got to say, I like prefer Cheryl's way of doing it. We need to just attach the rings on the outside. I've got the card, thank you cards. Uh, st autumn Stitching Inspiration interviews with Emma Congdon, Neo Rind. Emma Horan, which is Emma Louise Cross Stitch, and Jodie Rice of Satsuma Street. And we've got Pemberley House. 
for the Pride and for the Jane Austen fans. That is for pretty much full coverage as well. Part two of the autumn of the year seasonal well, uh, uh, monthly sale thing. That's really cute. The little red squirrel. Doesn't feel as involved as some of them have been, which is a good thing. Trust me, that's a good thing. So. And then coming up next month. Interested to see the Scandi stuff. There's always a bit of fun. And then we've got the little mushrooms, which are cute too. So probably, so I would stitch the Emma Cong oh, Emma Congdon. <clears throat> Excuse me. I might stitch the Emma Congdon some patches from the Emma Congdon um, table runner coaster. I really like the idea of that. That's cool. Um, I like the bat in the Witching Hour. I liked the tiny modernist, the little hexagon or octagon rather octagon bird thing. I like that, and I do like the mushrooms. So. And I've pumpkins. There's some things I would stitch in that one. I think that's, overall, that's a really good issue. Unless you've been having them for donkey's years and you probably have half of those, but you wouldn't be able to find them. So it's a good issue. And that's cross stitcher 414 October 2024. Right then. More haul and more whips. I know, it's never ending. Add that to the pile on the floor. I may have um, been into hobby craft. And added to my pumpkin patch. I got the little buccal ones, they're so cute. And I saw this and had to have one. Somebody showed it on um, Instagram and I was like, oh, that's really, really nice. And I went in and, went, and actually it's really tactile. And I just thought, even it's a really nice decor piece, even if I don't use it. But I have an idea for it, so. Let's put the pumpkins back in there. Eventually, they've been sat on the side since the start of the summer holidays. Sit. Um, I was buying some bits and bobs for the swaps and stuff. And uh, she who I don't actually really use needle minders because I tend to stitch in hand and I find them quite weighty and awkward. But I had to, I like to have one to the top of my clipboard. So I found so these are from Don't Step on My Needle on Etsy. Attempted murder, which is hilarious. And if it involves cross stitch and coffee, count me in. So, um, yeah, and I will be getting downloading eventually when I get around to doing the Lindy Stitches New Freebury, which was the, never mind, the passive aggressive raven. So that was hilarious. I, that just made me crack up. So my ATC came through for July, August. And it was a Stitcher's Choice one. And this is from Jackie Reach. Rich. I'm not sure how you say your surname, Jackie. Um, that's what you are. You are Jacqueline Reach on Rich. Rich. On Instagram. I'm sorry, I've butchered your surname. Um, but he's so cute. He's a De one of Deanna's Quirky Quakers. And I absolutely love him. To the point where he might not go in my ATC folder. He may get a little frame on the wall. Because he's so cute. And a little cat card. Right, then... The end is in sight. Three whips and one piece of haul left. Looking round, I've got everything. Ah, and some plans. Right then. So Sharon and I started another one of the tiny towns. This is the harvest one. And I've got a frill to do as well. Uh, and we've used, because we are lazy, not lazy, but actually we've created more words. Sit. So we can stitch from stash. I've pulled a lot of the colours we used in Autumn Town because I loved the variegated ones in there. And I looked at the, the trees in this and just went, they really need more variegation. So I've got my variegated, and I had a green in there that was really good. And so those are, that's my colour palette, which is basically a mixture. No, that is Autumn. Oh, I don't remember. It's Autumn Town palette with a couple of extras. And I'm stitching on 18 count 
Shades of Autumn by Sparklers, which is this amazing fabric. Oh, I can't pick it up. And they have enough to do three, so I'm going to do Halloween on this one, and I'm also going to save it for the Thankful one, which has just come out. And that's where I'm at with it. Just a little start this week. So, and despite me having all those colours, a lot of them, they were I've used the same colour twice. So it is quite, um, there was something crazy, like 15, 16 colours. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 colours. So pared it down a little bit. Uh, I did some work on Bee Farm. And we now have a bee. Well, we have a part of a bee. Um, and this is... I don't actually know. Dr. Smith Tonic. I should have known that. So Dr. Smith Tonic, ton, Tomic, Tonic by Sparklers. And again, 18 count. Because I love me some Dr. Smith. And I'm ashamed I can't get that anymore. And then finally, I succumbed to the Cotton and Twine box. Um, which is, if you don't know, it's a subscription box by the Historical Sampler Company. comes out every month. It's £20 plus postage. It's I think it's for, for Ada or 22 for linen. So that comes in this awesome box with this gorgeous wrapping paper inside. And it, although I've re-looped them. Pre-sorted thread. Ada, which was a lot better iron than that. A tea bag, that is an old grey. It came with the finishing stuff. So a piece of backing fabric and rick rack. Ooh. All nicely in, in a paper bag. Which oh, and it also had jelly beans in there. They may have gone. So oh but there we go, that's what it is. I made a working copy because I'm bound to get this buttered. But I I saw it and I just fell in love with the florals, of, I guess, of, of it. So it's 16 count mushroom. I think it's mushroom. Um, and all DMC thread. I might swap my... For the, for the ghosty, I might swap it out for some glow in the dark. So, and it, so cotton and twine boxes come with full kit and finishing stuff. Um, a sweet treat in a tea bag and something else and this month it was a minder and how amazing look at that minder it's metal oh, it bucket moves and everything oh. but it's really cool my only my only one thing was they had a really thick magnet on the back of the minder and they've got the super tiny thin ones as the backing magnet that's the only thing. That was my only kind of like thing with it. And here's my start. Stitched up super quick. It's really easy and I'm loving stitching it at the moment. Will I get it done for Halloween? Hopefully. I think I've got it into three prompts for Daily 30 for this week. So there we go. That's everything. So that is seven weeks in 35 minutes. Plans, catch up a bit with some of my um, whip goes. I decided to UFO my Bothy Threads winter kit at the moment. I'm not feeling it and I like it. I really do. I just, it's not calling to me and I've decided to I'd only put in 100 maybe stitches into it, 200 tops. So I've decided to put it away and to see whether I it, I like it again at some point. Um, so that I think I I think off the top of my head, I needed one day on Gamer, not a problem. Um, I need five days on Huck Farm because I haven't done the second call 
so far on it this year. I think I have another one to do as well. I don't have another one to do, but it's still on my board as another call. Um, and September's call was double violets blue. So that is my aim for this month is violets blue. Uh, I, I'm kind of, I'd like to think it might, might get me a finish. I'd aim to finish it in September this year. So we'll see. We'll see. Will 10 days on it give me a finish? It should do. But um, yeah, we will see. So that's my plan. My plan really is Sharon and I have a very ambitious plan. We like to have ambitious plans. Um, we're going to try and do a tiny town a month, which is crazy because actually I think Honey took us two and a half months to do. So so we can get the October one done. So we can, yeah, let's get this right. So we can get the thankful one done this month, the Halloween one done next month, and we can get the December one done in November, December. So crazy kind of um, ambitious plans. We also want to stitch uh, Bees in the Greenhouse by the Blue Flower. Yeah, we haven't started that one. And also both, and I want to get the cotton and twine finished. So, and we're starting the... Emma Congdon for my birthday, uh, no, Emma Congdon, Tiny Modernist, the book stack with the mushrooms and stuff for my birthday. So we have lots, lots planned. We have, essentially have two new starts a month planned. Um, are we mad? Yes. So, but I'm getting through some old whips. I'm really pleased about that. I'd like to try and get Santa's whips finished, Santa's trips finished this year as well, along with the coronation sampler. If I can get that, that's my kind of... You know, final quarter of the year plans, final third of the year. Um, just get some of these older whips done. And then next year it's Huck Farm. Ask me what am I stitching? Huck Farm is the answer. So um, I just want to get some older whips out, get them done. Um, I've had lots of newer starts. I need to update on my list and stuff. So there we go. That's my plan. Um, I will see you all in... Uh, Hubby, my very, very talented editing team and technical support, has um, suggested, because um, I was like, struggling, obviously it's been seven weeks, and I'm like, I'm struggling with my new schedule, which I need to keep because I can't do a fortnightly videos, are just not, it's, I have too much going on now to do fortnightly videos. So he's like, you need to do it the week that you get cross, new cross-stitch magazine, which is what I've done. So we're on track. So there should be a video every four weeks if I can do it. That's the plan. Right, I'm off. I am going to see you. I'm going to do some FFOing, uh, as you can see, I have quite a bit. I will see you all in hopefully four weeks' time. Take care. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for um, staying subscribed despite my... Um, I can't think of the word. My not very schedule schedule. Um, you can tell me what the word is below that I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, so take care, friends. Have a great stitchy weekend. I hope you're all well. Um, if your kids have gone, if you've got kids and they've gone back to school, I hope they've settled into the new term well. We've gone into year 10 here, so um, one's completely finished. It's all a bit crazy. Take care, friends. I will see you all in a few weeks. Bye-bye.